Rockstart started, I guess, about 10 years ago by um, our CSO, Sean Tucker. And the goal of it is to create an oral tablet that is essentially somewhat of a plug and play. It's an ad-based vector um, that is fused with a TLR3 ligand. So it initially, it, or it essentially imitates natural infection. Um, and then it encodes a gene of whatever recombinant protein you're interested in. So in this case, it's hemagglutinin. In the case of norovirus, it would be VP1. And so you infect your epithelial cells within the digestive tract, and those cells will naturally make that protein. Um, and then that's what is used for the immunization process. But it is a non-replicating AD5, which is important to, to notice so we don't get that antiviral AD uh, immune response. So it is, unlike in egg propaga propagation, it is cell culture based, but it's through um, more of a sterile cell line that we're making it. And so the, adv the advantage is, is because it is not egg based, we have limited or reduced um, incidence of mutations or antigenic drift. So that's the advantage to this. And then it's purified. So there's a strong need for oral vaccines, um, mostly because A, we have a strong dependency on needles and we also have a strong dependency or an issue with having ease of administration, right? We want to be able to, in order to increase the rates of vaccination, you have to make it easier for people to access it. Um, also, one other important component of having an oral vaccine is that currently the intramuscular vaccine has a difficult time harnessing the potential of the mucosal response. And having that oral administration really allows you to expand the types of immune responses you can generate for a protection, protective response. Based off of our challenge study, um, it seems that we get similar levels of protection. Uh, the quality of the protection, you know, we're still trying to look and see what, how does our vaccine differ from an intramuscular vaccine. Um, and so I think once we figure out how these qualities differ, that might help um, inform us about what are the additional advantages to having an oral vaccine. Does it provide protection against cross strains or is it specific to, or sorry, is it like a site specific um, advantage to the vaccine? Yeah. So it's a phase two study that was funded by BARDA. Um, and we went with our H1 monovalent vaccine. And just to give you a background on it, it is a tablet vaccine that has an AD5 base vector. Um, and it expresses the gene encoding hemagglutinin of H1A California. Um, and so what we did was we immunized subjects with either our vaccine, oral vaccine, or the intramuscular quadrivalent vaccine. Um, and then we also had a group with were just placebo. And so the clinical trial was split 2 to one in terms of distribution. And then 90 days post immunization, we infected the subjects or challenged the subjects rather with the live A California virus. And we looked for about seven to eight days post challenge to see what percentage of subjects were protected from challenge or not. Um, and so what we found was that our vaccine compared fairly favorably to that of the quadrivalent vaccine. But what was really interesting was Typically, HAI tends to be the surrogate of protection or correlate of protection in these intramuscular vaccines, whereas ours didn't seem to induce a high rate of HAI zero conversion. But instead, we found that we had an IgA mucosal um, signature. If you elicited IgA responses or B cell responses, it indicated that you might be protected from challenge. And so that gets to the point of that having an oral vaccine, you can induce this mucosal response that might confer protection in ways that are unique to that seen in the intramuscular vaccine. Sorry. I think one thing that we're looking at is trying to dissect how our vaccine protects um, and how you can actually further, not manipulate, but enhance that mucosal response to get a better and stronger um, immune response that might be more cross-protective. Um, and we'd also like to, we're utilizing the same platform for other indications as well, such as norovirus um, and HPV. And so we want to see how we can utilize those mucosal immune responses for other indications as well. I think that it can be used differently in certain indications. The most obvious is in the context of a pandemic, having a tablet vaccine is incredibly advantageous. One is that these tablets can be shipped through the mail. So 
in terms of distribution to the general public, it's much higher. It's also not egg-based, um, so making a tablet or manufacturing a tablet is much faster than having to do the live virus or egg-propagated virus. So that is an advantage that you have to having a tablet vaccine in the context of a pandemic. But even with the seasonal vaccine, it also is, can be easily used, right? Um, tablets can be easily generated for each seasonal virus that comes up. So it's, it, the turnaround time is very fast in comparison. We had no severe adverse effects that were observed. Um, and again, I'm looking at, I think we've had almost 300 people that have been dosed with various forms of our vaccine. Um, and we haven't observed any serious adverse effects, but they're very mild when they do occur, such as like um, diarrhea or headache, that kind of nausea. It's very, very mild.